Hello, welcome back everybody to Football United TV. And if you haven't already and you're new to the channel, please do subscribe, share and like. And we are here with two special guests here, Ladimus Prime and Egal, the Kid EG, with a new channel. How are you guys doing after this first week of the Premier League? Feeling all, feeling all good about what, you, what you've seen recently from your clubs especially? Uh, maybe not the best. However, we got the win, 3-1, and that's all that matters. It does. Uh, your new signings were good, right? <clears throat> Uh, Werner was really good. Havertz, not as much, but when you're shifted out of position and you've only traded with the team for about not even a week, it's going to, you know, you're not going to have the best performance. So it is what it is. If this is Havertz's worst performance this season, then I'm not going to have a problem with it. What about you, Egal? How are you feeling about Arsenal recently? I mean, Gabriel scoring that, that second goal as well. Arsenal fans, they loved it. Oh man, there was there was some stuff to be happy about because Willian, a new signing coming into the club, getting getting two assists hasn't happened since Ray Parler. Um, a debut goal for a centre back in his first game in the Premier League for Arsenal hasn't happened since um, what do you call it? Um, what's his name? Oh man, his name escapes me, but it's a Belgian player, uh, Vermalen. It hasn't happened since Vermalen, so it's like it's. It, it kind of brings me back to a time. It kind of tries. It almost makes me reminisce about the good old days of what football used to be like. Arsenal, supporting Arsenal in the early two thousands, but I can't get ahead of myself. I'm gonna to try to be balanced. I'm gonna not try to be deluded like I always am. But I'll tell you this: I think at Arsenal there is light at the end of the tunnel, and you can. Uh, and a lot of people are starting to notice there's light at the end of the tunnel for Arsenal. What do you think that is? Coming from a Chelsea fan as well, Prime, just looking at what Ego was saying, do you, think, do you think there is a light at the tunnel for them? Do you think they're going the right way? Do you think Arteta, bringing Arteta in and bringing Edu in has rejuvenated the club in, in what they want to achieve, which is pretty much battling for the Premier League? Um, yeah. However, battling for the Premier League, that, that is the ultimate goal. But it shouldn't be the main aim or uh, objective. You should, like for me, like for me, it's about realistic uh, expectations. Like for example, um, Arsenal fans saying they want you know party or uh, our, but if they don't, if they don't have that, if they don't have the finances to be able to get them, and those players are going to be like fifty mil, then they should. You know, start do realistic expectation. Like for example, there, there'd be no reason why they can't use, you know, El Nene or they couldn't have bought a Decora. Uh, they want to get top four and into the Champions League next season. And top four, I don't know how realistic that is to achieve. But there's no reason why they can't go uh, and win the Europa League. I mean, they're not my favourites to win it, but they are one of the favourites. So there's no reason why they can't go and win that. And the prize money that Europe, a Champions League football brings in, you can use that to continue to steadily uh, build. Because if you bring in Pardy and OR, that's big pressure on Arteta right now. And if he doesn't get top four and he finishes fifth with no Europa League and no trophy, that, does he get sacked then? I don't think he'd get sacked even if we didn't. I think... At this point, he has been given the managerial position. It's no longer a head coach. His, ta- his job role has changed from head coach to now manager. He takes part in those, those signings. He takes part in everything that's going on at the club. And, they, and they've given him a three-year, uh, three- to four-year project, basically, where we should be where we should be by the third year. Even if we don't get Champions League football this year, it would be, it would be aimed as a big, big disappointment. But I don't think he'll get sacked. I think... At this point, he, there would need to be a lot more bad results and we would have to go on like a three months where we didn't win a game like Emery for him to get sacked. Because remember, Emery wasn't just thrown out the door. We backed him until the Crystal Palace game where everything went pear-shaped. After we lost to Chelsea in that Europa League final, a lot of managers would have got sacked. But we still backed him. We said, give him a chance. We lost a couple of games at the beginning of the season. We still backed him. We said, he doesn't have Bellerin. 
tyranny or holding. We keep backing our guys. And you know what? Arsenal fans are so patient. We were patient 22 years with Arsene Wenger. We were patient with Emery, even though he didn't get top four and he didn't win the Europa League. I think Arteta, he's lucky that he's at this club and he, has so, and he says all the right things. When, he, when you speak, when he speaks, we listen as fans and we hear the right things coming out of his mouth. And as fans, that's all we can ask for. Like when Lampard says, when Lampard comes out and criticizes certain things about the team, as a Chelsea fan, you actually might like that. You know what I mean? And when Arteta does it and he says, I still have signings to be made. I still want a midfielder. I still want to improve the squad. Liverpool, we beat them, but we're still miles away from them. We need to improve. That kind of stuff, I love it. And you know mm-hmm. what? A lot of fans, they can be negative, they can be positive, but everyone, is in, everyone agrees. Arteta, he's been saying the right things from the jump and we can all support him as long as the results continue. Yeah. I mean, okay, maybe sack, getting sacked straight away is the wrong word, but... Will there be pressure on him? Like, for, I, for example, yeah, Arteta does say the right things in terms of Arsenal and expectations and stuff like that, as does Frank with Chelsea, as does, I would say, Oli with United. However, look at how much money Chelsea has spent this season. There's going to be pressure on Frank to at least finish third and challenge. If he doesn't do that, if he finishes, say, fourth and no trophy, people would say that maybe he should get sacked. And whether he does or doesn't, it's up to Roman and what his expectations are. Same with Arteta. If you spend big money, and I'm not saying he should get sacked. That was the wrong word. But the expectations and the pressure will start to, you know, double. Same with Oli and the money he spent at United. He brings in Jadon Sancho and he proves left back and a centre-back or a DM. That's big pressure now. And it's all about pressure and expectation. And with big money being spent, that twists and warps the realistic expectation of a team. Let me tell you something. This is a hot take. And Matt, I haven't said this anywhere before, but I'm going to say it here. And you know what? It's exclusive, everybody. So just tune in to okay. the I was going to tell you. You can clip this, laugh at me, say whatever you want to say. But Matt, as a Manchester United fan, your first 11 might be better than ours due to the fact that you have a really good midfield. But when you look at your second team, when you look at your options off the bench, be left back, right back, center backs, excluding goalkeeper. You have a better second goalkeeper than us right now after we sold Martinez. Striker, right wing, left wing. It doesn't matter where you are on the pitch except for the midfield. We have better options than you. And in my opinion, if Arsenal were to improve that midfield and bring in a Thomas Partey and Hussein Arwa, which is unrealistic to bring in both of them this window, mm-hmm. in my opinion. But if we were to get both of them, we would, we would top four would not only be a must, but I think it would almost be a guarantee. Because look at our bench. Look at our bench, okay? You guys, you guys bring in Dan, James, Pereira, and Lingard. We're bringing in Saka, Martinelli, one of William or Pepe off the bench in the attacking places. And you can tell me all of those guys are better than your options when it comes to off the bench. Right back, we have Bellerin, uh, Inzi Milnaz, Cedric. Left back, we have Kalazinaj. Saka could even play there if he wants to. And Tierney. Center backs, we have... 10 center backs. I could name 10 center backs who would get into a Manchester United second team. Let's be honest. Eric Bailly, who's your other center backs? Phil Jones, they're not getting in over uh, Rob Holding. They're not getting in over William Saliba. They're not getting in over um, uh, even a Mustafi, who's played really good at the end of the last season. And when you really look at it from a microscopic, just look at the names on the sheet and you don't think about the players on the pitch. You just names on the sheet. We have a deeper team sheet and we have 34 three players right now in the squad and the biggest hole is the midfield. If you can fix that midfield and I agree with you prime, even spend a 10 million on a, on a prospect like Ismail Ibrahim Sar, Sangara, and maybe another 50 million on a good quality like Arwa or Aparte, that midfield can come up a level and top four is not only a must, but it's almost a guarantee. Do you think, do you you think that's to do with the fact that also, Ozil could be coming back into the fold and that adds extra squad depth. It kind of does, doesn't it? If, if he seems like he's prepared and Arteta seems like he wants to use him again, where he said that the fact that everybody has a new start because I'm the manager, you know what I mean? This season, everybody, like, everything's wiped off from the history. Whatever you show me in training, you'll, if you do good enough, you'll, you'll get on the field of play. Our team is not good enough to have Ozil in the team. He's a passenger. 
he plays he doesn't he doesn't help out defensively he doesn't track back you have to build the whole team around him and with our defensive uh, uh, with our lack of defensive midfield help we cannot we cannot have a passenger in the midfield like him we need to have a workhorse midfield like liverpool and even chelsea have a really good workhorse midfield when you think about it with kovacic and kante and we don't have those kind of players we are we we have El Nani and Shaka, who I like, but they're not of the quality of those type of players like Kovacic, Kante, a Gini Wijnaldum, a Fabinho. They're not that level. And if, we, if he was in Man City's team, he could still play in the Premier League. But at Arsenal, I would rather have, I'd rather have a bench player, a, a, a young up-and-coming player like Willick or Azizi get a chance in those, in those dead games than Ozil play. Because Ozil, to me, next season, he's out of the club. And this season, he's not going to play a game because his contract, in his contract, if he doesn't get so, uh, as many appearances, he gets less income. So we are trying to make sure we pay him as little as possible in his last season. He can, he can be a Twitch streamer as much as he wants. We don't care. What do you think about that, Prime? I, I would answer the whole thing that Ego was saying about Man United you know, straight after what you think. Do you think that Arsenal have better squad depth? I'm, I'm, I can't include Party or OR because they haven't you know, signed yet. But in this moment in time, you say you have better squad depth, but that's due to the fact that Man United don't have squad depth. I don't like. I look at Arsenal's players and I look at your squad, and take away, say, a uh, Bamiang, Leno, Tierney, and maybe a few other players. Your players are roughly on the same level. I look at you know Bellerin, uh, Maitland Niles, and Cedric. I would say as fullbacks, they're roughly on the same level as your centre backs. None of them are. I wouldn't say none of them are even better than uh, Lindelof. Never mind Maguire. Uh, I, I look at comparison the, to their second team, Prime, not their first team. Oh, yeah, okay, their second team. United United first half of the season had a lot of injuries, and they were still able to pull it together in the second half and finish third. No, oh, but you're not answering my question. My, my, my whole point was, yeah. actually, it wasn't a question. I agree with you there. The Man United's yeah. first team is amazing compared to ours. But when it comes to the second team, yeah. you can't tell me Lingard, Pereira, and Dan James are better options than Martinelli, uh, Willian, and Saka, for um, example. And, and I also have Eddie and Ketia who I can bring on. Reese yeah. Nelson. They're no. not all levels, but in my opinion, I think that Dan James is as raw and as, mm. as, un, uh, as gifted as uh, Eddie Nketiah. But everybody else mm. is better. If you, if you put all those guys in, uh, in, on a list, you would mm. take those Arsenal options way before you take any of the Man United options. Lingard, uh, Pereira, or Dan James. Would you try? Oh, well, may, well, maybe, yeah. But also, you look at the competitions that you're in, particularly the Europa League, as opposed to the, the Champions League with uh, United. I mean, how far do United get into it? Maybe it depends on the run that they get. But say, last 16 quarterfinals. When is that in? March? As opposed to Arsenal, we would say that they probably should get to the semis at least. Mm. And we all know in the early stages, uh, you, you know, teams like Arsenal, United, Chelsea, we tend to play our second teams up until like the quarterfinals when it starts to get serious. You're, yeah, you, have, you might have better squad depth, but your squad depth and your squad will be used because of the Europa League. With well, well, United, they might not have the squad depth, but I don't think it will affect them that much unless there's actual injuries. You probably should know my stance on the whole Man United thing, the fact that I don't think we've brought in anyone significant. I mean, Van der Beek is good, and a lot of people say he is better than a lot of players in his position out there, but I still think Man United still need to make like you said, Egal, centre backs, we definitely, I think, do need to to build up on that if we want to win the Premier League. And look, I, I think going on what um, Prime said, the fact that we could still definitely get in the top four with sort of the squad we got now, yeah, fair enough. Like I completely agree with that. But I, I also agree with you, um, Egal, the fact that our squad depth is nothing like what you've got. Your second team, like you've got three teams, haven't you, behind your first team, you know? And I don't even think Man United have got anything anywhere near that, especially with the many outgoings that we've got. Small in and Lingard pretty much wants a move. You get a, an agent like Mino Riola, you, you don't, you know, you're not getting him to get a new contract at the same club, are you? You know what I mean? He's mm. the sort of guy that can get you a, 
you know, with, maybe with Pogba, he can do something to get them him a new deal at the club. But I still think that Mino Riola is there for Pogba to get him a move out. It's not going to be right now, but I think he will end up at Real Madrid in the next few years. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not hurt by it. But um, what, what, do, what do you make of that, then, guys? The fact that what Man United are doing at the moment? Do you think? Do you think it's? Um, do you think it's a good thing? Like finishing third and then suddenly, I think Terry said it earlier actually today that they spent more. They spend more money. Or no, maybe it was Mark Goldbridge. They spend. They spend more money in the Europa League stance than they do in the Champions League stance. What well, United spend more money in the Europa League stance than the. Apparently, on the history of it, yeah, we spend we spend far much more money when we're in Europa League circumstances. When we're in Champions League, we don't spend as much. I think that's because you want to get back into the Champions League, and when you're in yeah. the Champions League, you're more or less resting on your laurels. So the the, the owners are sort of worried about not not trying to get back in the Champions League, so they just throw all the money out, and then when they're in the Champions League, they kind of think, okay, we're good enough to get Champions League qualification so we can just keep with the sort of similar team. But I don't think that's the way you should go. I mean, look at, look at Chelsea. They're back in Champions League again. I know they had a, a ban, but they've gone and done exactly what they needed to do to compete in the Champions League. And I think it all started when you lost to Bayern Munich. I think the biggest signing Manchester United can make is a board member who, who deals with all the ins and outs and has a plan, like a five-year, 10-year plan. Because I feel like what you guys have been doing for the past four to five years, uh, seven years since Alex Ferguson left, it's been a manager comes in and it's his plan, it's his income, it's his way and his signings, where it should be the same thing what Chelsea have. It's a revolving door of managers, but they still have the same person at the top helping make the decisions, help push through everything. They might have, they might have moved him on and brought in Petacek, but they always have somebody at the top managing things. Arsenal recently started doing that after, sir, uh, after, Alex, uh, not, after Wenger left. And you guys still haven't changed your ways since Sir Alex Ferguson left. So I think the biggest thing Manchester United could do is not bring in Jadon Sancho, but to bring somebody in with a 10-year plan who's working in the back office, signing the players, getting the negotiations done, and you don't have to worry about Ed Woodward anymore because he can just do his job, which is the finances. You think that's the same prime? Are you feeling the same on that or you got a different different feeling? I don't know. It's for me, I'm always of the thing of you back a manager at your club, uh, no matter who it is. And the moment that as we've seen over the past with um like with United in with this example that we're using, like with Jose, when he stopped being backed, and we know with Jose, if you stop backing him, things will start to go worse, he'll turn against players, yada yada yada. And then eventually you have to end up sacking him. I think you have to stick and back your manager and back the vision and the plan, the philosophy. Also, yes, the, it does also have to lie in with what the club's, not even going to say the history and tradition, but what the club currently want to do. Like, for example, um, like with Chelsea now, we're trying to move into this attacking brand of football and if say Frank ends up getting sacked next season that isn't necessarily going to be a problem so long as we bring in another manager that has maybe not the exact same style of play but that sort of philosophy of an attacking brand of football and I think that's what you might have to do like with Ollie right now what he's doing is great he's building uh, getting rid of you know the deadwood and everything and building a squad if he ends up leaving next season or the end of this season, that's not the problem. But you bring in someone else that can continue along that path and bring United back again. I think that's the main issue. So what, I mean, <clears throat> let's kind of step outside of our own shoes for a minute here and, and, and just quickly finish up with the teams that have played in the Premier League so far, apart from our teams, who, who's impressed you the most? I know it's one game, but like we'll take it step by step. You know what I mean? But this this weekend, who impressed you the most outside of your your shoes? <clears throat> Leeds to go to the defending champs and go do what they did against Liverpool was impressive. But the, listen, listen here, Eagle. I just want to throw this in as well. I, I hate to say it, but I know on the football Terry say Terry said that it wasn't a good performance from um, from Leeds because they lost. 
but I, I, I still feel that it was a good performance. Like, it's sort of a Marco Bielsa move. Like, you, you will try to score more than you do. You know what I mean? It was an attacking sort of style of play. And I know it was like a few blunders from the defenders. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, apparently the, their centre-back partnership it was the first time they'd ever played together. Also, for a team that just got promoted, as great as Bielsa is as a, as a manager, what, do you expect them to go to the reigning Premier League champions that are apparently one of the greatest teams on the planet right now and to get a, what, like a 1-0 win or 2-0? We know what Bielsa is. If you really know him and what he's been doing at Leeds, you know his philosophy of this uh, high-volume press and attacking football and the way they were able to break Liverpool down. I mean, for example, that goal that exposed Van Dijk over the top. Van Dijk is constantly doing that. He kind of, he's lackadaisical when balls come over the top because he's he usually nine times out of ten deals with it. And no one's been able to kind of figure that out and hone it in. But someone like Bielsa, he will study every player in your team and he will figure out and find a weakness and how to, you know, get around that player or nullify their threat or whatever it may be. And Leeds will be very interesting this season going up against Man City. They've just played Liverpool, gone up against uh, Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs. They'll be amazing to watch. Yeah, what do you think, Ego? You were just about to go on to Leeds, weren't you? And I'm sorry to cut you out there, but... Um... <clears throat> no, no, it's fine. I was going to say Leeds United are a team that are going to do this. They're going to surprise some people. They're going to get, they're going to get some shock results. And, they're, and a lot of these promotion teams, what happens is they first come into the Premier League and they, they don't fear anybody. Except for uh, even Fulham, they tried to play football against us. They did not. They did not rest on their laurels and say we're going to sit back and counter. They had more touches than us at certain times. They had more possession than us, and maybe that was in our tactics. But I, I think all these promotion teams are showing that they're quality. And I think a lot of these Premier League teams, like Palace and stuff, it, it, they they needed to start making some moves in the transfer window, or else they were they were going to be in trouble. Well, we're hearing about Zaha. Maybe he says yet again that he wants to join a bigger club. But there doesn't seem to be anybody in for him. What do you think a player like that does to, to get the move that he wants? I mean, it's tough for Zaha, isn't it? He's just stuck at Crystal Palace. And yet bigger clubs don't feel like he's the sort of player that they want either. Um, what, what does a player like that do in, in, in football these days? You, if you're Zaha, what you got to do is you, you're a club legend at Palace. You just grind it up. And you just grind it out until until your contract is, is about to expire. How long does he have left in his contract? Two years or one year? Well, when did he sign Cause, a new contract? Cause, I can't remember Because he's, what, 26, 27, right? He's going to be 28 by the time his contract ends. He still has three, three to four years left in the top of the game. He can go to another league and be in a Champions League team on a free transfer. A lot of teams would take him. But I think Palace are not going to sell him for cheap. And they're, apparently they're trying to get Ben Rama. They already got Bashwai. Palace could be a really good team this year. And with Roy Hodgson, defensively, they're always going to be a good team. It's just, mm. can they score the goals? That's the problem. How old is Zaha? May I ask? Let me find out for you. I think you said about 26, 27, didn't you? Oh, okay, that's good. I thought he was like 28, 29. Yeah, two years left. I mean, what's in the past, um, what Chelsea have inquired about Zaha, Arsenal have. Apparently, they've quoted like, 50, 60 mil, which is a lot of money. I don't, I don't know. I think he's, maybe he's missed his boat to leave. Because you look right now, at least in the top six, who really needs him? I mean, you, you say United maybe need a right-hand side player, but they can go get Sancho. Arsenal seem to be sorted now. Chelsea are fine. I mean, we need a four-choice winger, but he's not coming to Chelsea to be fourth-choice. Spurs look to be signing Gareth Bale. City are stacked with wingers anyway. Then he drops down, he can go to Everton, but I don't think the style of play really suits him. Wolves are fine. The Leeds are fine. And also, I don't think Leeds have that sort of money to spend. I mean, he, he could go to Europe, but teams in Europe aren't going to spend 50 mil on Zaha unless it's like Bayern or whatever. But, you know, those big teams, they can go get someone better. So... He was linked to Monaco. He was linked to mm -hmm. Atletico Madrid. He was linked to even Dortmund. So 
he's being linked to some big boys. I think he might. I think he might stay at Palace this year and possibly force out a move next summer because it keeps it keeps happening. But he's gonna no matter what. He's a club legend for Palace, and to be a legend at club is invaluable. I would. I would you want a club legend. Let's be honest. Rather than play as a big part player for Atletico. True, but force out a move though. Does that not, would that not affect his legendary status? He's tried it so many years, though, isn't he? He's even tried. He tried to force out a move last last season, and then Roy true, was true, just true. like, "Please, can you just give us another year?" And I guess he sort of, like you said, Ego sort of thought, "Well, at least I'm going to be playing in the Premier League, and I'm going to be starting every every week." Yeah. But um, if they get Ben Rama, uh, though, Matt, if they get Ben Rama, that is a Zaha replacement. Yeah. If you get Ben Rama, let Zaha leave. Ben Rama is. Three times the player that Zaha is, in my opinion. He's absolutely a beast. But I think that's the problem, isn't it? It's not about just letting him leave. It's like, who's going to take him? I don't think there's any solid bids coming in from any club, like you said. Like, I don't think anybody wants him in the team. I even think if Man United looked at a right winger, they'd look at probably more like Adama Traore over Zaha because they've had a player like him. Like Memphis Depay, you know what I mean? Do you want to bring back a player that did, didn't succeed? It kind of looks bad on the club as well. So I just don't think he'd even be the third or fourth choice. But what um, I wanted to ask you guys to quickly finish up, who do you think has been the worst performance so far and, and, and you think that really needs to sort themselves out? It's early days though, isn't it, Prime? I would say Fulham. I look at Scott Parker coming up. And yeah, I know you're a, relegation, you're a championship side playing against Arsenal, but to not show to not play any of your new signings to not really look like I mean it was at the end it looked so easy for Arsenal and you've got to show a bit more and yeah it's only one game I'm sorry Southampton lost to Palace 1-0 my, my mistake it wasn't Newcastle yeah. yeah actually no no hold on no Who Newcastle played West Ham yeah West Ham is actually the worst team it looks like they're just falling apart and they're going to get yeah, ready we play them next Let's go. Yeah. Three, I mean, four, my thing with West Ham is London Derby coming up. Maybe as a team, not the club, but as a team, they can pull together and do something against what Arsenal. About, but nah. Southampton lost to Brentford in the, in the League Cup round just to the other day. In my opinion, there that's a big disappointment. That's embarrassing. No, but like when Southampton don't have the squad depth like any of the top six or top eight. So I don't. They lost to a championship team. Yeah. Okay. I get that. I get that. Prime. I do. It, it's not the nine nine nil spanking they got, and then they went to Man City and only just lost two one right at the end. Like. Oh, what about Everton beating Spurs? We never spoke about that. So yeah, Eagles had to go. Unfortunately, mate. He's got his own channel, his own thing to do. Prime. Um, but we were talking about um, Spurs, like Eagle said, getting butchered by Everton. I don't think necessarily butchered, but. He didn't say that actually. I just throw that. I, I threw that in there. <laughs> but Prime, what, what do you think about that game and and the fact that Spurs looking like they're going to get bail now and they got Regulion, haven't they? Um, that's quite impressive. Yeah. yeah. First of all, that game. I don't know. People talk about uh, how well Everton did and how much has dominated the game, but also Spurs sat back a lot and they just invited the pressure and the attack onto them. We've got ego, and, and it looked quite easy near the end, which is I don't know. It's weird. It's annoying, but um, it, it's again with everything that's been happening first game in. It's really hard to judge things. I mean, you can win, you can get overly excited, and you can lose and get overly negative. So I, I don't know. I'm all, give it a few, you know, run of games. Not many teams really had a preseason. I mean, Chelsea only had one game. Uh, I don't know how much of a preseason Arsenal had as well, for example, with Man United, but just let people get into the flow of things first and then we can start crucifying players. <laughs> we had a really good preseason. We had four games. We, if, you can, if, you can, if you include the Liverpool game. In four, the community yeah. field. Okay. So we had four full games. We, we didn't have a lot of our players play. Like Pepe didn't play most of those games. Willian played some of them. Abamian played every single game. A lot of the youth academy players played a lot of those games. And preseason-wise, the team that I think is going to be coming out guns blazing is, is Man City. They have Wolves next. It's a big test. Wolves is a good team defensively. If Man City come and they score three goals for City, uh, first game, first Wolves, 
I think the league's got to watch out because they're going to be hungry. And remember what they did after lockdown, the way they scored all those goals against us, against um, Newcastle. They embarrassed Newcastle. They embarrassed a lot of teams after the lockdown. Yes, they lost to us in the, in the, in the FA Cup. They lost to Southampton from a screamer from Shea Adams. But Man City are the most built for not having a preseason because the way they play football, you don't really need a preseason. You can just keep the ball all day. So what did you think of, um, just we were talking about, me and Prime were talking about like, what you bring up, um, Tottenham losing to Everton. How did you make of that ego? I think Everton are a team that is actually starting to get things right. They have been for, for years spending over, overspending on guys like Awobi, overspending on certain players, but recently they've been getting it right. With spending only $62 million on these three players that they got, Allen, James Rodriguez and the Corey, who are the ready-made players to jump into that midfield. They have a really good team and was a top manager, Ancelotti. It just goes to show you when you have the backing from your owners, sometimes you can go right. Even though, even though they've gone wrong so many times, it finally is starting to go right. And I have a hot take. Richarlison kind of reminds me of Salah at Chelsea. The way he is, the way his, thought, his thinking and his thought process is not up to the level where he needs to be. But once he gets that, he could have had two assists, but instead he, he decided to take tough shots off, off angles, falling down. He decided to take a shot when he went around the goalkeeper when he could have just squared it. And if Richarlison gets, ever gets his game right, he could be scoring 20 goals in the, in the league easy. Agree with that, Prime? For Richarlison, yeah. I mean, he, what, he's still... I know he's been in the Prem for a few years now, but people need to, seem to forget that he's still young. He's still a kid. He still needs to be you know, coached and nurtured and no disrespect to the other managers that he's had, but he's finally now has a world-class manager who's been there and done it and coached some of the best. And I think he can turn Richarlison into a monster of a player. I mean, it cost Everton 50 mil for him back then, but give it three, four years. Do you think, imagine how much he's going to be worth? Loads, mate. Ridiculous amounts. Guys, to end it up now, <clears throat> A good question here. Who's your player of the week, whether it's your club or another club, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to be biased. You can be biased if you want to. Who's your player of the week? I'll let Prime go first. Probably James Rodriguez. The way this guy controlled the game against Spurs, and I've been one in the past to criticise him. I think, I think Willian is, is the player of the week for me. With, with contributing heavily in all three goals, coming into the team and getting two assists on his debut, what a, what a performance. And to me, he's probably up there for me. That's the, that's the guy that I'm picking. Do you know what? I, I wouldn't, yeah, I'd, I'm going to kind of go with Prime. I think Rodriguez had a really good start. Um, the way he was playing with Richarlison as well. And I think Yuri, Mu Yuri Mina at the back, they sort of fed it through. Like The biggest, the biggest shocker in, out of everything is that when it comes to, when it comes to the Premier League, we, we, won't know, we won't know what West Brom is really like, but they looked really good their first game. Even though they didn't do the best, they still looked really good. And against, uh, you know what, the Premier League is going to be like this sometimes. You're not going to win your games. And Leicester look like there might be another challenger for the top four again. I agree, mate. Egal, and obviously Prime, thank you very much for coming on. Prime's not here at the moment, but Egal, thank you for coming on. We're going to check out your... Uh, you going live? Yeah, I'm going live at 8 o'clock. Oh, in brilliant. like 10 minutes. Well, we're, we're going to come and check that out. That's why I want to get off as well, you know what I mean? <laughs> my, yeah. my favourite show. You know what? If you could, if you could put, if you could put the link, uh, if you could put the link to my channel in the communities page, I'd really appreciate that and just let people know a little bit about me. Of course, mate. Go and check out Eagle's content and also check out Ladimus Prime as well on Twitch and Twitter. About the Arsenal, you know? <laughs> you changed it for us. Mate, thank you very much for coming on. We'll see you very soon. Boom. Later, bro. Um, tell us why you picking James Rodriguez as your favourite player so far this week. James ha Rodriguez, he, he broke through at the World Cup with uh, two bang goals and got the big move to Real Madrid. And I've been someone who's never really saw what everyone else has seen in him. 
at times people have said he was world class and everything. I never really saw it. Um, that oh, it's fair to say that was also during the time where number ten started to you know die out of football. And then Ancelotti managed Real Madrid, got the best out of him. Ancelotti was sacked. Benitez came in, then Zidane, and he just wasn't playing at all. He went on loan to Bayern Munich a couple of seasons ago when Ancelotti was there. He was amazing. Uh, then he went back to Real and there was nothing. Now he's at Everton. Ancelotti seems to be the manager that can just get the best out of him. So if he can keep performing, he can be a shout for one of the best players in the Prem at come the end of the season. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, I mean, look, he had a bad time. At Napoli, didn't he? You know what I mean? He got pushed out pretty easily. And I think he just likes the players that he likes. And, and seeing that he's worked with Yemez Rodriguez two different clubs now, three different clubs now. Um, it just shows that he knows who he wants in his club and he knows what sort of style of, of play he wants to play with. And especially having like Sigurdsson behind them. And uh, I really like Yuri Mina for Colombia as well. And the fact that them two could sort of get along at the club, it always helps, you know what I mean? If you have someone there like you can talk to and, you know, like... <clears throat> Mental health as well for football players, you know what I mean? You've got to be in a situation and in a club where you can have a few friends, do you know what I mean? Like, it makes a lot. So I'm thinking Yuri Mina was another reason why he came. Probably had a little message and sort of said, look, come on, it's, it's, it's a cool place, actually. It's not like Spain, you know what I mean? You're not going to get all the good weather, but he'll be shown on TV all the time. Everton's still quite a big club and Premier League's the best league in the world. <laughs> Look, uh, let's see how he does. Again, like I said before, earlier, it's uh, one game. You win and all of a sudden you're the best team in the world. You lose and you're going to get relegated to League Two and stuff. So it's just, let's just see how things uh, work out. Next, e or not next season, at the weekend, he could have a bad performance and all of a sudden the narrative flips on him. So it's, let's just see how things work out. Prime, thank you very much for joining us today. It's, it's been a weird... Um, you know, on and off, everyone's been on and off coming back. <laughs> it's like the five substitution rule. It is, yeah. yeah. We've gone well overboard on that, but that's what a fan fan channel is. You know what I mean? We're not like a studio with Jeff Sterling and all that lot. You know, it's uh, it's uh, fan opinions. Remember, everybody, so don't get too heated from what we're saying. We're not always politically correct in football, but we like to give our, our points of view and you're there, the viewer, to be able to sort of come back at it. And if you want to come on the show and call anybody out, you're more than welcome because that's what it's all about. Prime, do you want to... There are, there are a lot of people. There are a lot of people who will probably want to call me out, so... No, not, not on our channel, mate. Because you, you give it real to yourself. I think, mm. I think people notice that. It's like, yeah, they might not feel the same necessarily, but they understand that that's how you feel about it and they can see the... The resemblance and on on what you're talking about, so I'm I'm cool with that, mate. I'm, that's why we want you on, mate. Talk Thanks, mate. <laughs> Do you want to shout out your Twitch and and your social medias, Prime? Once, uh, again? yeah. I mean, if you've been watching the channel, you already know. But if you're new, um, Latimus Prime X on Twitter and Twitch Latimus Prime number eight. So find me any of those platforms, and you know. Come follow and let's talk and stuff. The game. <laughs> the game is the one thing that matters. It's the 90 minutes of football. Exactly. And we're fans. We're not, we're not you know, none of us here are amazing analytical, in-depth pundits or anything. You know, I, can be, love. I can be very bad, bad sometimes. I can get all my, my stuff wrong. So at least I'm open to understanding other people and, and taking in what they're saying and, and coming up with my own conclusion whether it takes five minutes or five years, you know, it, it, it's about understanding and learning and, and, and hearing other people's opinions. Cause otherwise you think, you, you think your mind is the, the opinion of everybody else, don't you? And then when you hear everybody else's opinions and they're a little bit different, you kind of think, okay, so it's not quite what I feel. Cause when I used to watch Man United back in the nineties or early two thousands, you didn't have social media. So you thought, everything you thought was exactly what everybody else thought but it is, just isn't that way you know like there's so many people that are completely on a different page but 
the whole point is to just push it all together and understand what other people are saying and coming up with your own conclusion. Would you agree? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, just because you differ uh, in opinions doesn't mean it's a bad thing. You, you should. That's the only way you can have genuine uh, back and forth, genuine conversations. Agreed. Agreed. Mate, thank you so much for coming on. Took so much of your time today. I'm very sorry about that. No, it's okay. Look, any time, I keep saying, any time you want me on, I'm glad to be here, man. We've got to go and watch Eagles now. He's, he's going live in, um, well, he's live now, lad. So, Ladimus. I keep saying lad, sorry. But he's live no, now. It's lad. <laughs> I just see it, every time I see it, it's written up on your screen. I'm like, uh, no problem. Yeah, that's, that's why I just get people to just call me Prime. It's easier. Fine. Remember that, everybody. Ego, do you want to shout out your, your new channel and your social medias? Yeah, go, guys, go check out EGTV. And if you struggle trying to find it, just type, just type in EGTV and then go to channel. I know there's this Ethan Gamer guy. I got to sort that out. This Ethan Gamer guy. Sounds like, <laughs> the guy makes the guy is absolutely loaded. He's making like, I looked at his net worth. He's making $4 million off YouTube. And he has like 2 million mm-hmm. subscribers. Anyways, it's called EGTV. And if you can't find it, type in EGTV Ego or type in EGTV NBA and I should be the first one that comes up. Everybody, thank you for tuning in and we shall see you soon. Take care. Peace. Mm-hmm.